Hey, this is Sean from Clutch Baseball. I'm here to answer some questions about our cards. Uh, if you've got a starter set with some of your friends and you're curious where to start from, we're going to go through what comes in your starter set and how to set up the game and how to get the gameplay going. So uh, inside our starter right here, that's got an E on it. That's for our East set. We have our three different divisions. So with each starter set, you will get a full game map that will come inside. It will come with your dice that you'll need. It will come with your regular die, 20-sided die, 24-sided power die. It will come with a quick start guide, how to get the game going, how to go through a basic at bat. It will come with a full team here, already constructed under the salary cap, under a full legal salary cap there. So when you spread them out here. Each starter set comes with 25 player cards, which cover all the positions, a starter, a bullpen, comes with 20 strategy cards to start you off, and it comes with a few stadium cards. So, with each set you'll see the first card I have here is a holographic Cespedes right here for the Mets. Each division comes with an alternating rare foil card for that division. So inside our set here we have Bartolo, he's going to go in our starter set right over here. I'm going to move Cespedes right out here to center. I like to set my lineup up right here so I can see who I'm going to go with before I set my lineup. So Adam Jones is going to have to play center field because he's got a center field position right there. Cespedes plays the outfield. He could play center, but only center fielders can cover that position. We have Kimbrell right here, Boston closer. I'm going to send him my bullpen right over here. Right over here is Yelich of Miami, where our all-star game is this year. He's going to be our third outfielder, unless we choose to DH one of them. Steven Matz. Long Island native right here. We're going to move him into our rotation here with Kaloon. We're going to put all of our starters over here. Set our lineup. We can kind of see where we're starting to fall out right over here. See Ryan Flaherty right here. He's utility. He's going to go on our bench right over here. You can tell with our little salary guys we have some of them. Mitch Moreland, he's going to come in and play first. Start setting up our bullpen here. Starlin Castro is probably going to look a lot better next season when he comes out. Maybe with our, our mid-season set. So, just start to set it out here. Another guy for our bullpen. Bullpen's getting pretty deep. Final guy right over here. Ryan Zimmerman's going to be our final bench player, so we can choose to sub some players in here. So. As you can see, it comes with nine players to fill all your positions right here. We have our DH, we have our bullpen, our bench, and your five-man starting rotation. Also comes with your dice. It goes out right here. And I'm going to go through that in a moment, the difference between the two dice and how we do that and that. that. So in our final package right here, you're going to open it up. Inside we're going to have all of our strategy cards. It only comes with 20, so you're going to have to use booster packs to fill in the rest here. But it's definitely a good start, especially if you're just going to start off by going with the quick gameplay style. So we have our five stadiums here. You can pick your stadium is going to be based off your team. So you're going to have to review what your team came with, depends on what set you got, and it's going to best fit each stadium that it comes with right here. The first thing we've done, we've set up the game mat, and we've rolled for his home. Jordan rolled higher than me, so he'll be home, so he's gone with Colorado Field. You'll set your stadium up right here. Now, at Colorado Field, it says plus one to the pitcher's X zone. We're going to get into that when we go through our basic at bat, but each stadium also has a specific to the team, so Colorado pitchers, it's negated for them, so it doesn't count for them. So we're going to start. He has Johnny Cueto on the hill here. He's chosen as a starter, is the highest salary on his team, so he's the number one starter for Jordan. My number one starter is Jake Odorizzi right here. He has the highest salary for me, so he'll be going. Jordan has set him up first. I've set my lineup up in my preferred order. That is up to you from one to nine. We've covered all four infield positions, all three outfield positions, and our catcher and our pitcher are our battery. So on that note, I would like to go over the scorecard here. At the top, it has your battery, your infield, and your outfield. So you're gonna wanna set that up first, so you're not gonna have to constantly be checking your lineup for it. So Jordan's battery, your battery is your pitcher and your catcher's fielding combined. So that is a 10 for him. He will use that on stolen base attempts. The infield is 11, that is his first baseman, his second baseman, his shortstop, and his third baseman. Make sure you do not accidentally add your DH that may be an infielder as well to that. The outfield is four, so that's set up, and I have my three set up right here. Over on our board right here, I put my starter and the rest of my bench players over here, ready to go on the bench. 
And right over here in the bullpen slot is all of my relievers ready to go. On the right side over here is our strategy cards. We will draw three at the beginning of the game, and then we will draw one every half an inning from there on out. Our rule with that is once you get up to seven strategy cards in your hand, you can no longer have more than that. So you may draw an eighth strategy card for a moment and then have to choose which one to discard from there on out. So we're going to shuffle our decks right now before we start the game. Put them right down on the board. We're going to draw three to start off our game right now. Now that Jordan and I are ready to start, Kristen Yelch will be my first batter, so we're going to go through a basic at bat sequence right here. So Yelch must step into the box in order for him to throw a pitch. If he's not in the box yet, he cannot throw the pitch, I may be reviewing my cards. So I'm going to step in right here, we're going to go through the first uh, basic at bat using our quick start guide, but you may find our full rule book at clutchmoment.com on there. So going through the first at bat, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to roll the die for the pitch. That's the first thing. He's going to use the 20-sided die for that. So he's going to roll it. On 11. He's going to add his 11 to his pitcher's command, which is a 5. That's 16. That is higher than my on base, which is a 13, so Johnny Cueto has earned the advantage. That's the second thing you determine. The third thing you determine in the swing is now I will roll for the swing, and I will use the 20-sided die for that. But since he got the advantage, we're going to be using his chart, which obviously favors the pitcher. So I'm going to roll a 6. Using his chart, a 6, that result is a GB, which stands for ground ball. So he is out, that is a ground ball out. When the batter comes back, you may put him back in his spot. Personally, I like to flip him over, that's up to you. I like to know and keep track of my outs this way. Our second batter will step into the box. There's a 12 versus a 5, so he's going to roll our pitch again. Now, I'm going to go to my strategy cards here. Flipping over to play my strategy cards. You can play that as soon as he comes in the box. This is an offensive card right here. It says all the offense are blues, all the defenses are reds. So it says right up top when the situation is that you can play it. So this one says play before the pitch. He hasn't thrown his pitch yet. When a left-handed batter or a switch, and I have a switch hitter right now, is facing a right-handed pitcher. So he's a right-handed pitcher. So since I have that matchup favorable, I get to play that card. It says roll the swing using the power die. So I get to use that regardless. So he's going to throw the pitch. A three. So it has three plus his five. It's only an 8, so that's my advantage, and since I use Sweet Spot, I get to use the Power Dot on my chart right now, which is good because Cesar Hernandez doesn't hit a home run until 23, so we have a shot right here. 5. So 5 is a result right there. It's a fly ball. He's out. He's going to go back to the bench. There's two air right there. Okay, I'm going to play in on the hands, which is kind of the opposite of Sweet Spot. So before the pitch, when it's a righty versus a righty, and I roll the pitch using the power knight this time. A one. So perfect example right here. Johnny Quino has thrown a mistake pitch. If we look at his X zone right there, he has thrown a mistake pitch. Now that means I get to use the power die regardless of me playing a strategy card. 18. Cespedes. That is a double for him. Move him around. He will now be on second. Back here. I'm going to step out of the box right here because I'm going to check my strategy cards real quick. I do not have any cards to play, so I'm going to send Russell Martin up in the box. He's ready to go. Okay, 17 dominating over me. That's his advantage. And a 19. So if you look on Quito's chart, that's a single. So off the pitcher's chart, Marshman moves to first. Cespedes moves to third. Now, since it is two outs, here is our rule for it if you check our advanced rule play that when a runner is going home, he automatically gets plus five to his speed because the outfield has to make a much larger throw to the plate. So, number two, there are two outs. When a runner is on second base with two outs, he's running on contact in baseball. So he gets an additional plus five for that. So he's going to get plus 10 to his speed on here. So if you look at his speed, it's a 15. He's going to get 10 to that. So he is a 25 right now coming home. I will check my scorecard. Jordan's outfield is a four making it nearly impossible for him to throw him out unless he's got a strategy card. So I'm obviously going to send him here. You got me, Sean. I have no strategy cards to play. Okay, so he's got nothing to play. His speed is a 25 coming in. He would need to roll a 22 to get him out. That is all. It, what, it, what it is is he has to add his outfield to a 20-sided die roll. 
So if he had had a larger outfield, if he had had my outfield of eight, he could have possibly made the play, but he scores without a throw. I like to bring him in. I flip him upside down so I know he scored, but you can just keep tracking the score column right here. Plus, you're going to add one to Johnny Cueto's innings right here. Because every four runs that Cueto gives up, he is going to lose an innings pitched on his chart. Now, if we look closely at Cueto's chart, his innings pitch is seven. He can go seven innings before tiring. But if he gives up four runs, or for every four walks he gives up, they're two separate categories, for every four he gives up of either one of those, he will lose an inning off of that and become tired. And what that means is, if he is tired, he loses one command for every inning he's tired, and the opponent, the opponent will roll with the power die every time with the swing. So it's not suggested to pitch a uh, guy tired. So we've got two outs, one runner's in. Jones is coming on. Okay, one, that is another mistake pitch from Cueto. Do I have anything? I don't. We're just going to roll the power die here. And just like that, ground out on my own chart. Extremely disappointing. He's coming in, but we got a run. And it is one nothing after half an inning. So what do we do right there, Jordan? Draw a card right there. Every half an inning, don't forget. A lot of you will for, you know, have a big inning, big play. You'll forget to do it. Try to remember to do it at the beginning of the inning so you do not have an argument with friends. Okay, we fast forward to the ninth inning here, and I'm trailing by one now. So he has Johnny Cueto on the hill still. He has pitched eight innings because of a strategy card he played, giving him plus one for having a quality start. So he was able to pitch eight innings without being tired. What are you doing, Jordan? Are we going to the pen here? Oh, yeah, I'm not leaving him in tired. Okay, so I'll flip him over. I have my nine hitter coming up to lead off this inning. I do not have a solid bench right now, so I'm going to want to swing away. So my closer has a plus two, a plus two clutch, and we are in the ninth inning, which is a clutch moment. So I am going to play make some noise. Before the pitch in a clutch moment, factor your pitcher's clutch into the pitch. So plus two to the pitch. Okay, before we roll that pitch, I'm going to play a strategy card. I'm going to play not without a fight. It's a neutral card, but play when losing in the ninth inning or later. I get to look through my deck and draw a card. I also have to discard one. But you can do that after you can get your card. Obviously, I'm not going to discard, hopefully, the one I want. Add it to my hand. i got to discard one now. I'm going to get rid of that defense. Don't need that right now. Okay, we're underway. Okay, Dyson's advantage. Using that makes some noise. Gone. Strikeout. Nothing to play. Hopefully, we get something going here. Okay, 9, 13. That one's going to be me. He's got a righty plus one, but I have a lefty up right here. 14, single. Okay, I'm going to take a moment to check over my cards. Okay, I'm going to play after a base hit or a walk. Look at your opponent's hand. Discard one card of your own. So I get to discard one of his after I look at it. I'm going to get rid of the defense card. Got to stop him right now. Okay, Hernandez is coming up. I'm also going to play before he gets into the box. I'm going to play hit and run. So that has uh, a few different scenarios on it. It has five different scenarios. And it, it goes through each one, a strikeout, a ground ball, what you do on each one. Most of them have an advantage for me right here. Five. Plus four, that's nine. That's my advantage. So using this card, if I get a base hit, he's going to advance to third without a throw. And there we go, single. So using that result, my hit and run, a single on there, it says advances to third base without a defensive throw. So Yelch gets to go over there. Paid off for me right there. Got one out. Okay, big batter up. So Cespedes is a right-handed batter, and on my... Picture, you can see that I have righty plus one. So the lefty righty advantage is crucial in our game. Gives me a little boost. But it oh. doesn't help. Oh. 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 Pitch. Here we go, right here. Power die. Oh, a fly out. I am not going down without this. I have a card after fly ball. Your opponent's infield makes a defensive play. So a defensive play, that's going to take his entire infield, so his infield rating on here is an 11. He's going to take that 11. He needs to get a 20 or higher adding that. So 11, he just needs a 9. That'll give him a 20. The 20 would be successful. So he needs to roll at least a 9 here. 
3. So, if it fails, change the result to a foul bowl and re-roll the swing. So I get to use the same chart as before, so luckily I had the advantage and the power die. To do that. And oh my, he has grounded out. Okay, ground out situation. So since we have one out, he just needs to double play to end the game here. So I'm double play, round ball right here. Cesar Hernandez would automatically be out going to second. So he's going to come back and return right here. Cespedes is going to first. Cespedes' speed is a 15. So in order to turn a double play attempt, he needs to use his infield plus a throw to first base and try to get him. So his infield, to remind you, is an 11 right here on here. So he needs to roll a 9 again to be successful. Because he gets plus 5 for going to first base and double play. So. Okay, 13 plus his 11, that's going to be a 24. He is out. That would be an inning ending double play. But I did want to go through, if it was a tie, if he had tied the base runner. We all know if tie goes to the base runner, he would be safe then, but he's out by a lot. Yelich would score if he had beaten that out to first. Yelich would come in on the ground ball and score, but since that's a third out, inning's over, game's over, Dyson gets the save. Gonna pencil in the save for Dyson in that game. Jordan took it three to two. We were able to go through a quick gameplay of how to set your cards up, run through your lineup, play their strategy cards effectively. If you want to look for an enhancement to your strategy cards, you can go to Booster Packs on our website at clutchmoment.com. You can follow us on our social media at Clutch Cards on our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook, and you can look for it in the next few weeks our updates about our upcoming midseason set, our All Star set featuring some new players like Aaron Judge, Andrew Benatendi. Look for those uh, updates on all our social media, and thanks for watching.